Hey, what's up everybody? This is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. This is a beginner Photoshop tutorial for those who are new to the program. Although if you're an experienced user, you may learn a thing or two as well. I'm gonna show you how to create circles in Photoshop with the shape tool, both a filled circle and an outline circle. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Okay, to start out here, we have a new document. This document has basically nothing in it except for that background layer, who's locked, which is okay. We don't mind that. But this this uh, document is just 1920 by 1080. It's all new. What I need to do is come over here to the shape tool. I can click on it and hold, and it pops open a bunch of different shapes. I've got rectangles, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, etc., etc. Well, an ellipse is a circle, okay? It's actually an oval, but if you hold shift while you do it, it becomes a circle. So we're gonna select that ellipse tool. Before we do anything, we need to change the color because right now the color is white, so it's not gonna show up. I can actually look up here in all these properties panel, pre-creating the shape, I can adjust these properties. I can adjust the fill to be a color like this pink color. I could adjust the stroke to be a color like blue. And that I can flip flop so that it becomes an outline circle or a filled circle. We can adjust how big the stroke is and then some other properties. Let's go ahead and draw a shape. We're gonna click and drag on the canvas. Notice how it's an oval, but if we hold shift, it becomes a perfect circle. And then when we let go, it creates a shape layer over in our layers panel. This shape layer, because it's a circle, circles and rectangles have live shape properties. These live shape properties exist until you begin to transform and really tweak this circle in ways beyond it just being a perfect circle. However, as long as you have these live shape properties, there's some pretty cool stuff. You can adjust the width and the height, its location manually, or you can drag it around. You can adjust whether it's filled. We could get rid of the fill, and we could just add a stroke instead. So now we have a stroke, we can adjust how thick that stroke is, what type of line it is, we could make it a dotted line. We can also adjust uh, where that stroke appears, whether it's on the inside or the outside of our uh, bounding circle there. We can also adjust the end points. If we do have broken end points or if there are corners, we can adjust the corners and then other things with the, uh, the path operations. So if we go back to just a solid dash, oh, and also to note on this dash, we can adjust the gap and the dash length. So with that, we can adjust how close these dashes are to each other. Notice how it's changing. We can adjust uh, how long those dashes are, how short they are, and that creates more and more dashes on our circle. I'm just holding the down arrow key and shift to create more dashes there. And then as we create uh, a thinner stroke, those dashes become more like little hash marks. If we go back to 10, we have a little dotted circle. So that's a little bit more than what I told you I'd teach you, but these live shape properties are are pretty awesome. We still have, as long as we have the ellipse selected and a shape tool selected, we still have these properties up here and these will always remain as we can go from a fill uh, back to some color and notice how our stroke is still applied there and we can always get rid of the stroke up here and just convert that back and forth. So I can move this with the move tool, which is the V key for a shortcut key. You can move it around. You can hit command or control T to transform it, and as you do that, you can hold shift and option or shift and alt to transform from the center out to make this circle bigger and smaller. And because it's a shape, we keep that vector quality so you can scale this thing infinitely and it's not going to lose quality. It's not going to pixelate as long as it's still a vector shape. Once you rasterize it, which if I right click this and rasterize this layer, that's when it'll become like any other pixeled object, it will stretch and skew when you when you transform and you're gonna get some of that pixelation. So as long as you keep it a shape, you still have that vector shape. Now one thing we can do with this shape, and this is going a little bit beyond, but if you're new to Photoshop, you can create masks, and masks will help you sort of cut shapes. So let's say you wanted a half circle. We can create a selection with our ellipse tool, or I'm sorry, our marquee tool, our rectangular marquee tool, and we could start it outside of the circle, create that selection, let it sort of snap to the center right there. And once we have that selection created, we can come down to that ellipse layer, click the new mask button, and it's going to create a mask based on our selection. So it didn't delete that circle. That circle's still there. If I shift click on this mask, 
it's going to get rid of the mask or hide it for a moment. That circle's still fully there. I'll shift click again to show it. But now we have a half circle that we can sort of mess around with. We can command or control T, transform that down. We can rotate it around, holding shift to keep it in proportion. Hit enter or return. And notice now we have a half circle. So it's almost like a, a, little, a little sun on the horizon, except for it's blue. Uh, but this is just a little bit I wanted to teach you guys about circles, creating circles in um, in Photoshop. You know, it's kind of a beginner's lesson, but uh, there may be some things here that you weren't aware of. I've known how to create circles for a very long time, but it, w it wasn't until uh, earlier this year that I kind of learned about these live shape properties. So there's lots of new things always coming out in Photoshop, and it's good to sort of stay up to date with what you can do with all these different tools. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe for more tips, tutorials, and creative videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.